Myoglobin and hemoglobin are involved in oxygen storage and oxygen transport. O2 is important for aerobic metabolism. We get a lot more energy out of burning our carbon sources to CO2 and water than not. Bacteria rely on diffusion of O2. However, higher organisms have O2 transport systems. We use a coordinated iron, Fe plus 2, ferrous iron, that adds O2 binding to proteins. And you'll see more about this in a minute. In humans, myoglobin stores O2 in the muscle. Whales have a lot more myoglobin than humans. Myoglobin is a monomer, whereas hemoglobin is a tetramer, four subunits. Hemoglobin transports O2 from the lungs to the tissues. So here's a, here's a picture of a hemoglobin spinning, and it has uh, the alpha chains are slightly longer, slightly shorter than the beta chains, and they're slightly different than amino acid sequence, but pretty close. Red blood cells are have a are, account for our hematocrit, which is 45% of the blood is uh, red blood cells for men and 40% for women. Their red blood cells are also called erythrocytes. They're, they don't have a nucleus or mitochondria. They're essentially bags of hemoglobin and uh, other things. So. Uh, there are 5.2 million red blood cells per mill of blood, 250 million hemoglobin molecules per cell, and about 2.5 million cells are made or born and destroyed every second. So we make a lot of hemoglobin going on all the time, hemoglobin structure and destruction. So here's the port of porphyrin 9 ring with a ferrous iron bound in the in the center that makes it a heme, and that heme is this gray part here in this structure here. And when hemoglobin binds oxygen, it moves, so it's sort of like the hemoglobin actually is breathing. So uh, bore, the Bohr effect on, P, uh, on hemoglobin is a pH effect. Myoglobin binds oxygen in a hyperbolic fashion. There's no sigmoidal to it. However, hemoglobin has a sigmoidal or cooperative binding curve like this. So in out in the lungs at pH 7.6, it has a higher affinity for oxygen than it does down at 7.2 out in our tissues, and that allows better release of the oxygen from the hemoglobin in the tissues. And that, that release it change in pH is about a 26% advantage of increasing the amount of because uh, you want to release it at as high a PCO2 as possible. If it releases it at a low PCO2, you don't get good saturation of the tissues. You can also, hemoglobin also binds carbon dioxide. So hemoglobin at the end terminus has a positive charge. and It'll bind one carbon dioxide molecule to form carbamino hemoglobin, and that's about 20% 20, 20 of the carbon dioxide is carried as carbamino hemoglobin. And red blood cells also have carbonic anhydrase, which makes bicarbonate from CO2. The acid yields two protons that are inside the red blood cell, and that increases the Bohr effect. Also, CO2 uh, is effect can be seen in the PCO2. Out in the lungs, we have a very low PCO2 because we're constantly exhaling CO2. Out in the tissues, we have a high one because we're constantly making CO2. So it, it gives about a 33% better delivery of PCO2 because of this change. This Phosphoglycerate, or BPG, is an organic molecule found inside red blood cells. They do glycolysis, and this is part of the glycolic, glycolytic pathway, uh, shun off the glyc glycolytic pathway. And it has negative charges on it, and those negative charges bind to positive charges on the beta chains of hemoglobin. So you get one BPG bound per hemoglobin tetramer. So BPG stabilizes the tight deoxy state via ionic binding to the beta subunits. Increased BPG promotes O2 release from hemoglobin. BPG increases in red blood cells during hypoxia, anemia, smoking, and high altitude. So here's BPG, and without BPG, you still get a sigmoidal curve, but it, it's not, it binds oxygen very tightly. With BPG, you get another shift to the right, just like you do with CO2 and pH, low pH. And so people living at high altitudes have more BPG inside their red blood cells, and it aids about three times better delivery having BPG than not having BPG. And you get a higher PCO2, which gives better oxygenation of the tissues and better metabolism. 
HBF is fetal hemoglobin and O2 transport to the fetus. So BPG aids oxygen transfer from adult hemoglobin to fetal hemoglobin, which is very important for keeping the fetus alive. And what happens is the fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity for O2 than does adult hemoglobin. And the reason it does is it has a lower binding of BPG. So adult hemoglobin binds more BPG, fetal hemoglobin binds less BPG, and that aids in the binding of the oxygen to the fetal hemoglobin. So the combined effects are hemoglobin with oxygen bound out in the lungs. Then as you add protons, carbon dioxide and BPG, these all bind to the hemoglobin, giving you better release out in the tissues and giving a higher PCO2 out there. Now, we also have a, in the hemoglobin structure, there's this uh, histidine called the distal histidine. And that histidine causes car oxygen to bind a little better to the hemoglobin molecule. And it also causes the carbon monoxide to bind at an angle. So carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin about 200 times more tightly than does oxygen. However, it's it, at 200 times you can take a person that's been had some poisoning from carbon monoxide and give them more oxygen and they'll recover. However, if it was not for that distal histidine, it would bind 25,000 times more tightly and we would easily get poisoned by carbon monoxide. So uh, about 50% of car is like having half your blood. So if you get 50% carbon monoxide hemoglobin, you got, you've lost half your blood, which is not good. So people that are dead from carbon monoxide poisoning have cherry red cheeks. Carbon monoxide hemoglobin is more in structure like oxyhemoglobin than deoxyhemoglobin. Deoxyhemoglobin is sort of brownish or bluish and uh, relative to oxyhemoglobin, and that's how we measure it with pulse oximeters. Real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. Oprah Winfrey. Talent is cheaper than table salt. What separates the talented individual from the successful one is a lot of hard work. Stephen King, work hard. Dave Johnson, East Tennessee State University, 